My name is Yojalia Lori. Uh, musically, I just go by Yojalia. I am Wutati from Shelburne Bay, Cape York, Far North Queensland, and I am running from the far west coast of South Australia. I was always fascinated by the performing arts, dancing, singing, acting. I was just all around in love with the fashion and the makeup. And it was only until um, I think I got around the ages of 14 or 15, that's when I started singing in different choirs. And I started off singing with um, the Gondwana National Indigenous Children's Choir. Uh, well, you probably know them as the Qantas Choir. And singing with them was a great experience because I got to tour with them um, to Sydney, to Canberra. I sang at um, Parliament House for Julia Gillard. That was a really great experience because I, I got to understand what it takes um, as an artist to be touring. And I used to sing in a um, a gospel choir, an indigenous gospel choir, that we would sometimes sing in different languages. That was a great experience because I think that kind of opened things up in terms of, you know, what does being an indigenous artist look like for me? I think I'm influenced by a, like all of the people that surround me, my family, my friends. Um, being in my community also influences me in the way I hold myself I think as a person and as a role model in this community like it they all kind of inspire me to be the best that I can be so I can give back. I absolutely idolized Emma Donovan and, and Deline Briscoe. We're talking like this was more than 10 years ago and I remember the first time I saw Emma Donovan in person and I saw her singing and I thought that's what I want to be. I want to be someone who sings for community, who works in the community and writes music with the community as well because she'd come in and did a few shows with us and you know they were nice, they were absolutely nice people to us and it was such a great experience and since that day like I've always kept in touch with Emma and that kind of led to um, working with Black Arm Band with her as well. I've also grown up um, in a very musical family as well um, but before I you know cut myself short and um, give myself a bit of credit for the fact that, you know, um, I did find music in my own way and I found my own passion in my own way by doing the choir work and different band work growing up and doing a musical. I was in Hairspray the Musical in, in my high school and that was kind of the point, the turning point in my life where I thought, okay, I think I can do this. My dream was always to live the creative lifestyle in Melbourne and get my, you know, experience and quals down there and then at some point be able to come back to Cairns and apply it, which I have done. Happiness, happiness. I, look, I write a lot of love songs. <laughs> I, I write a lot of love songs and I write about um, my experiences. And personally, look, I, I feel that's kind of all I can write about because I, I wouldn't write about or talk about anything that I don't know fully about. It's only till about recently, I think with COVID, that I've been trying to, trying different ways of writing music. And I've most recently been working with my brother, Jindu Laurie, who's a talented producer. And I'm not biased because he's my brother. <laughs> um, I think out of all the producers I've worked with, I think he's pretty top tier. And um, he's written a few songs for me. And one of those songs I've sung today uh, Waiting for Happiness was a beautiful song that he wrote for me and I connected with that as well. I think when he gave that song to me, um, I think about it more than a year ago where I was in my life at the time, I was kind of feeling like I was waiting for happiness as well. And I think it just happened at the perfect time that he gave me that song. So I'm very proud to honour him and honour both his and my story as well and um, make that song mine now. It's a god-awful Sunday afternoon The sun is out and the flowers are in bloom With the temperature of my body and my heart Has the 
has risen to extremes it's off the chart Interesting and orderly. Tie me up in a bunch like your flora. So you can keep baby in the corner. I think the Australian music industry um, doesn't support Indigenous artists as much as it could, I think. I still have to pay my rent, but at the same time, you know, I still have to do my music on the side. So at some point you either have to, you know, get a grant to fund your music or you have to pay for it yourself. So at some point there has to be some support in place and I personally don't feel that there is much support in place, especially now during a pandemic. Um, in terms of you know programs that are available out there for Indigenous artists, I think it'd be really hard right now, especially during a pandemic, to virtually get anywhere. I mean, thankfully we do have the internet now and whatnot to help us and project us more and amplify us more. But at the same time, like you know. Um, the music industry is struggling a lot right now and I'm very thankful I'm not in Melbourne because I'd be struggling a lot more right now. <laughs> Look, in DigiTube and the First Sounds compilation, um, I'm very blessed and, and privileged to be included on that. You know, like 
I think the, the greatest thing as an artist is when you release your music and you see people being touched by it or you feel, you see people, um, you know, making some kind of connection with other people. I think as an artist, like that's the best thing that you could ever hope for when you release music. I think being an Aboriginal person in this day and age, it's just a part of who we are. To have, to have a say about something. Specifically for me, I come from a very big activist family. My grandmother was a part of the 1967 referendum and I'm very proud of that. And I think, you know, you, with that running in my blood already, I'm already, you know, someone who notices things and I, I'm happy to use my platform to speak on issues. So my debut single, Bagana, um, is I released it about more than a year ago now. So Bagana means to call out and rise up in Moaning language, which is my father's language from the, uh, the far west coast of South Australia. Bagana means to call out and rise up in Moaning language, and it talks about uniting my people. And in the chorus part, when I say um, Bagana, Bagana, Bola Jogobirina, and I say Wirad, Wirad, Tarbi Megora. Uh, so Wirad, Wirad means trouble, and Tarbi Megora means trouble is on the wind. So I'm, I'm calling to my own people, telling them to unite because there's trouble coming. Bagana, Bagana, Bola Jogobirina. Wirad, Wirad, Tarbi Megora. Me gorra. 